Okay, let's start. Mr. So in the last class, uh, we looked at the folder cast code. The idea is simple. It is like a regular cast code. The only difference is that we use two different transistors for uh, the common source and the common gate. And yeah, this is what we saw in the last class. Actually, copy this. Yeah. So as you see, uh, the circuit is yeah the core is still the same. We have a differential pair. So the common source with common source is with an NMOS. So we go ahead and use a PMOS for the common gate for buffering the current. And then we did this. And a couple of advantages with a folded cast code compared to a telescopic cast code or what we uh, noted in the last class. So the output swings are better, especially when you put it in unity feedback. And uh, secondly, uh, we saw that if we have an NMOS input differential pair, the maximum input common mode can reach the supply. Okay. So one minor thing I missed to highlight in the last class is this. So here, yeah, I asked you, to, I asked you guys to compute the output minimum here, right? But can you guess what what might be the minimum the output can go to here? Huh? It is basically two VDS. So minimum VDS is two overdrive. So it's basically output can reach close to two overdrive voltages. You can compute it, but if you actually compare it with uh, the telescopic cast code, yeah, let's say this guy. What do you think the minimum can go here? It is basically three drain to source voltages, so three overdrive, right? So basically, the output swing is slightly improved in the folded cast code. Okay, that's because we have folded the current here and uh, brought it to a different branch. So at the minimum, we, I mean, at the lower side, we have two transistors. Upper side also, we have two transistors, unlike the telescopic cast code. Okay. So I'll probably mention that. So higher output swings also. Okay. And of course, in the last class, I asked you guys to draw the schematic for a PMOS input uh, folder cast code and compute it. Did anyone try to do that? Okay. Great. So, but anyways, I'll just draw the schematic. Uh, the calculation, I'll leave it as an exercise for you. So, of course, see, the reason I asked you guys to draw it to yourself is uh, there is no point in memorizing circuits, right? Should be able to draw it from scratch. If you understand it, you'll be able to draw, right? So, of course, here we want to have a PMOS input differential pair. So, I'll put a PMOS input differential pair. Source is connected. And remember, from the source, I have a current source to ground here. So what comes here? Current source to supply. So that will be a PMOS. I mean, I'm just drawing the dual of this. That's all. Okay. And uh, these currents have to be given to a common gate. So the common source is a common, sorry, common source is a PMOS. So common gate must be NMOS. So I need to have basically uh, two common gate NMOS like this. It should feed the currents this way. Okay. So output is taken here. This is the output of the cast code. Now, okay, this is the output here. And here you see, you have a cast code current mirror. So we should have huh? a PMOS cast code current mirror. So we'll quickly draw it. This. Okay, and you do the connection here like this and at the bottom we need to have a current source what kind of current source we'll use it's an nmos current source again you can check here we had a pmos current source so obviously here it has to be an nmos and that's how it is okay so this will be the schematic so i mean you guys work out and see what would be the minimum input common mode and that should be i mean you will find that it can be equal to zero So today we'll continue. I mean, you know, if you think about the folded cast code, we have found the DC operating point, small signal gain. Again, that was an exercise for you. Common mode ranges we found. What is one more thing we'll find? For the phi transistor OT, what is the other thing we computed? Slew rate. So let's do that. And for slew rate, I'll 
assume we have ideal current sources so things become simpler so this is i not and if the branch i mean the okay, the current in this branch is i1 what is the value of the current source yeah the here the current is i not by 2 here it is i1 so we need to make sure the current source supplies a current of i not by 2 plus i1 okay i'll erase it Good. so again for slew rate i'll assume that we have a capacitor at the output and let us say at the input i apply some vb plus delta v here vb so once again let's do the same thing if i keep increasing delta v what can happen which transistor can go i mean uh, can turn off m2 right so at one point i mean uh, after a particular delta v max so the current use a thicker one the current in this branch will be the full current i not here it will be zero right oh okay okay zoom it out yeah fine so which means uh, this branch is completely cut off right uh, now the current here is i not so what will be the current flowing in this branch we have i not by 2 plus i1 of which i not flows so what is the remaining current that flows i1 minus i not by 2 okay now this is a current mirror so what can you comment about the current in this branch same so remember uh, this branch carry zero current so for practical purpose i can say that this is not there so what is the current flowing here yeah i1 plus i0 by 2 okay so what is the total current that can flow to the huh? i0 right so the slew rate is okay i mean the calculation is slightly different but the end result is still the same okay but uh, in this calculation do you think we have inherently made an assumption somewhere i mean look at the currents i have written everywhere and see if there is some inherent assumption that is made i mean look at this current i am saying i1 minus i0 by 2 so is there any assumption that i have made here ha ah, i assume that this current is positive right only then this works so the assumption i have inherently made is this if this is the case the slew rate is this okay so let's also see what will happen otherwise okay and for that let's actually quickly understand what might happen for smaller delta v based so let us say <coughs> let us say i apply a very small delta v okay which means there is going to be i mean the currents or currents demanded are small so which means i'll assume that yeah here the current is i not by 2 plus some delta i here it is i not by 2 minus delta i okay so i'll say for small uh, delta v so we have this is the this is the case so which means i'll erase all these things this is fine so the current flowing here is this i not by 2 plus delta i so what will be the current that will be flowing here yeah i1 minus delta i fine so now if i keep increasing delta v right and let us say we have chosen it to be like this i1 is greater than i0 by 2 hmm? so if i keep increasing delta v at some uh, delta v max we already know that this entire current gets steered here right so let's say this at some delta v max and at that point i can say that delta i is equal to i0 by 2 
but now let us say i have chose i mean this is basically if uh, i1 is greater than i0 by 2 okay now let us say i choose it the other way around and i do the experiment i start with a small delta v so no slowing so i keep increasing delta v which of the currents will become zero among these two this will become zero first before this right because i1 is smaller so i will say at some delta v prime which is less than the maximum you would have had otherwise delta is okay so which means the current here is zero so that branch will first go to zero okay so now delta is i1 so i'll replace here everything so this is all i1 so once again uh, this is a current mirror so current flowing in the right side branch is also zero so i'll assume that it is all off so disconnect it for now like this hmm? so now let us see uh, the current this current is i0 by 2 minus i1 this current is i0 by 2 plus i1 so the remainder current is what will flow here what is that remainder current 2i1 so what is the slow rate in this case it's 2i1 by c is that okay hmm? okay so did you understand that uh, if i choose i want to be smaller than i not by 2 this current can first go to zero is that point clear right if that goes to zero i have basically disconnected these two because they don't carry any current huh? now uh, if i know that delta i is equal to i1 right so here it's i not by 2 plus i1 i not by 2 minus i1 so the current flowing in this branch is i not by 2 minus i1 the current source is i not by 2 plus i1 so the remainder of the current is sub difference between these two this two i right so basically in this case depending on the choice you make between the two currents you can have two different scenarios okay and okay so let us say now in this case right i know that for this delta v prime the required demanded current is i1 now let us say i go and apply a larger step let us say I choose some delta v greater than this delta v prime in that case what can you say about the demanded current delta i i mean at least let us say ideally what would you expect it to be i mean same it's a same transistor i think uh, for an earlier delta v prime the current was some i1 now i increase the delta v what would you expect it to become greater than i1 we expect it should be greater than i1 right but of course like we uh, thought if this becomes greater than i1 so uh, let me i'll use this so the current flowing in this branch will become greater than i0 by 2 plus i1 but we only have a current of i0 by 2 plus i1 so what might happen let's say for now we have an ideal current source sorry ha ah, right see if i mark this vd1 we are pushing in a current of i0 by 2 plus i1 that's all we have but we are trying to pull out more and more current from this node so that node potential will reduce so if vd1 reduces let me make some space so if vd1 reduces what can you say what will happen m1 will yeah m1 will start to enter triode region right the drain voltage of m1 is continuously dropping so which means m1 will enter triode region and the moment it enters triode what can you say about the current in the transistor earlier it was in saturation it had some current let us say now the transistor starts to enter triode region the current will this is the id vds characteristics right we are going somewhere here current will start to reduce and everything will uh, end up in such a way that the drain voltage is so that the current here is equal to this the drain voltage will keep dropping that will reduce the current demanded in the transistor also and it will settle to a point so that the current is this that's what will happen 
So I'll just say M1 enters type. Okay. So now, uh, this is point clear. So now, as a designer, you have two choices, right? I can choose I want to be greater than I naught by two, or like this, I want to be smaller than I naught by two. What do you think might be a good choice? Hmm? Why? Okay, why? Why split it is more here? Yeah, I mean that is that is also true, right? The other way to think is even simply speaking, see, uh, slowing is something that you want in the circuit or you don't want. You don't want, right? You don't want the uh, op amp to get maxed out and supply all of its current to the output, right? So if if this is something you don't want, in the earlier case you see that for some delta V max is when the slowing happens. If you choose the other way around, even for a smaller delta V, this happens, right? So which makes this to be a better choice, okay? So this might be a better choice. So now you can see that in this folded cast code, we are uh, consuming an additional current of i1 here, right? In the telescopic cast code, we just had a current of i0 being drawn, but now we also have this additional current, right? So which means this is going to consume a higher power. So the only uh, reason you might want to use a folder cast code is the three reasons we mentioned here, which is if you want higher output swings or a case where the input common mode is required to be closer to one of the supplies, either supply, uh, VDD or ground. In these cases is when you might want to consider using folder cast code. Otherwise, there is, there seems to be at least no real benefit to use this. Okay. So higher swings and higher common mode ranges are the two takeaways. Okay. Cool. Uh -huh. So again, you can uh, now, if this is a non-ideal current source, so now now it's again the same thing. The principle is going to be same, right? This voltage will keep reducing, right? If this reduces, do you think this will be a it's a PMOS current source? But that we are not limiting that PMOS to supply only I naught Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, in saturation region, even if you, I mean, if for the PMOS, if the drain voltage drops, do you think it is going out of saturation or going towards into saturation? more and more towards saturation, right? Now, if you look at the characteristics, if I go more and more towards it, I keep increasing VDS, the current doesn't increase so much, isn't it? Whereas for the NMOS, you are going this way, so current will significantly drop. Why, why would it happen there? There we just have one current source, there is no confusions there, right? I mean, here the issue is because We'll again come to it later half of the course. We have two different current sources. So that's why this happens, right? There we just had one current source, so there was no competition, right? This all happening because you can think of it as having, let us say, two different current sources. So which means they are not equal. The node voltage can go higher or lower. 